This is Scott Allen Miller with the Sam IT Channel here on YouTube. And recently, in the last few weeks, there's been tons of talk about uh, Hyper-V, what it is. It's a Type 1 hypervisor, uh, how it's licensed, it's completely free. Uh, but one of the things we haven't really touched on strongly yet is how do we install it? And this is an important topic because it's an industry best practice that's actually distilled from just general industry best practices, but can be applied to a product best practice in the case of Hyper-V. Uh, and this is actually a really important one because it would appear that the majority of people dealing with Hyper-V, especially new people to Hyper-V, uh, due to the kinds of misunderstandings that we see in other places, not understanding how it's acquired, not understanding its licensing, not understanding that it's a type one hypervisor, uh, tends to lead to some common mistakes about deployment. And Microsoft has not been great about being really clear uh, because they provide some deployment tools that are not appropriate to use outside of a lab and they kind of promote them because they're really easy to use and because they sell Windows. Microsoft is out there to sell Windows licenses, don't forget this. So they're going to promote things that sell Windows even if they offer a Hyper-V option that is completely free that doesn't necessarily sell Windows. Not that you shouldn't buy Windows, but your Windows should be licensed on top of your Hyper-V. You should not be licensing Hyper-V and creating problems with your Hyper-V install. So with Hyper-V, best practice, and this, this is not a specific thing to Hyper-V, this comes from other places, but in the case of Hyper-V, Hyper we can distill it to a very simple rule, and that is you always install Hyper-V directly. That is, you go to the TechNet eval uh, download center, you get Hyper-V as an ISO from there, and you install, install Hyper-V directly from the Hyper-V ISO. That is the only channel to getting Hyper-V. It is not an eval. It is the full product. Do not confuse. And a lot of people do this. They think that because it's downloaded from the eval center, because that's the download uh, store name, that it itself is an eval. That is not correct. It is, the eval center is the name of the place you go to, not uh, a definition of the things you get from there. Most of the things you get from there are evaluations because Hyper-V is a large server-like product that is uh, free and comes from a download center uh, and requires registration. They needed a place to put it. The eval center actually makes a lot of sense because it's free. There's just not a spot for it to have been put otherwise. So, so don't worry about that. That is the official download location. It is not an eval. It does not time out. It does not have limits. You get Hyper-V from there and you install it directly. What you never do is put in a Windows Server disk, install Windows Server, and then install Hyper-V as a role. That is, that you can do that in a lab. You can do that to play with it for the first time. You can do that with Windows 10 if you're doing this as your desktop. That's different. But for a server where we're putting Hyper-V on for production, you always install Hyper-V directly, never as a role. Now, people will say, well, how big of a deal is it? It installs. It's a Type 1 hypervisor. We've had this video before. We know that it uh, shims under uh, the hypervisor and moves the existing operating system up on top as a VM, so that must be fine, right? Well, yes, it works, and yes, it's still a Type 1 hypervisor, but it creates a lot of problems. The biggest problem is that that VM that's just been moved uh, up from being physical, the one that actually did the role install, that one has to be licensed, and that creates a lot of problems. Often not today, down the road. This is the one that bites you in two years when you want to go to the new version of Hyper-V because it's really important to keep your hypervisors updated. If you do this, you are license locked to the, uh, the actual host VM licensing. You can't just update Hyper-V whenever you want to. That's enormous, but people don't see that for two to four years down the road, or they don't even realize that it's happening. They simply see it as they don't update, and they don't really think about why they're not updating when it's so important to be doing so. So that's a really big deal that people always overlook, mostly because they talk about it within the first two years and don't realize what they've done until much later. So people tend to get burned way down the road and don't connect it with the decision to install as a role. So that's often missed. Other things include patching. If you install Windows in that VM, it is much more bloated and completely unnecessarily compared to a proper Hyper-V Direct install. That means that you have to patch more often, you have more security concerns, 
Uh, you will have to reboot more often, and rebooting is a big deal when you're talking about your hypervisor on which all of your VMs depend. Uh, that bloat also means a larger attack surface. So you have security concerns, not big ones, but you do have security concerns that are unnecessary, and that's the important part. And of course, it's bloated. It is larger than it needs to be, and that means more system resources, not a lot, but a few extra system resources are dedicated to that VM that should not be. All those things add up to it simply isn't a good practice practice to install that way. The big ones are the licensing and the patching, everything else maybe we could overlook, but those in production, absolutely not. So now you have a best practice and understand why we always install Hyper-V directly and why that's the thing to do. I'm Scott L. Miller. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.